Hi everyone, I'm a solo developer and I'm currently working on my game Trinstick Survivors. I've written my own engine to make this game and I'm now at a point where I have a Steam page up and are planning a release for the end of this year. Writing my own engine meant I had to write things like collision detection and pathfinding from scratch. Though this way I could really customize them to the needs of the game. Since it has to handle so many enemies moving towards the player and turrets without overlapping each other, I couldn't have used a basic off-the-shelf solution anyway. Or at least not without having performance issues. So I'm going to talk about the biggest technical challenges and game design challenges I encountered so far. And show you how the game developed over time, starting with the very first commit I made. The footage you're seeing right now I took from the trailer, so if you're interested in this game, you can wishlist it on Steam. But let's take a look now at the very first version I committed to Git. Until I looked this up for this video, I forgot what this used to look like. In the beginning, the enemies were just red dots you could shoot at. This way I tested the collision detection between them and the bullets. To this day, collision detection is the biggest bottleneck from a performance perspective. The problem is that there are so many entities interacting with each other in a tight space, especially in the current version of the game. I added some more art and the first sound effects. That was the first time I did anything audio related in C++. Then I looked into pathfinding so the enemies could navigate around walls. So I divided the map into cells and used a flow field algorithm to calculate the direction towards the player in each cell instead of each enemy. In case you're interested, a lot of the algorithm is based on a paper describing how to use it in Supreme Commander 2. I link it in the description. You can see a debug grid here where each color indicates in which direction the cell is pointing towards. The blue color means that there is a direct line of sight towards the player. The flickering edges are still a bit buggy in this early version. Then I looked into camera movements and loading the map from a CSV file. I implemented explosive enemies and used a sprite sheet to make the walls. And then I came up with the worst idea I had so far. From the beginning I had a really concrete idea of what the moment to moment gameplay should look like. But what I didn't think too much about was how the player would progress through the game and get stronger over time. For some reason I thought a more complex system would also make it a better system. So I had the idea that you upgrade the player in a shop and collect currency while you play the game. And then you could choose from 6 normal upgrades that would rotate every time and you could save money for 3 special upgrades that would only change when you bought one of them. This even went so far that I had a version where you could invest money that would then generate interest over time, which you could then use to buy these special upgrades. Looking back it was a mess with no vision at all, and unsurprisingly it also wasn't really fun to play with. So later, while I really started to hate the system, I threw it all away and started fresh. But first I implemented splatters on the ground after you defeated an enemy and adjusted the lighting to make the game a bit more atmospheric. I added capture zones on the map you could capture for rewards, but I deleted them later because they weren't any fun either. And then I implemented pickups and turrets. So you can collect pickups in the game and store them in one of these three slots and can then use them later. This way you can also pick up turrets you can then deploy. And they then shoot at enemies automatically. I had to adjust the pathfinding algorithm a bit so the enemies would also target them and not just the player. And then I redid the upgrade system. And this time I went at it and put a little bit more thought into it. And asked myself what do I actually want from this. And it became clear, also from just looking at what didn't work in the old system, that the upgrade system should be simple. The player should not spend a lot of time here, but be able to make a quick decision and get back into the game. The upgrade should be very impactful, because the core principle of the game is to sell you a power fantasy where you are really strong in comparison to your enemies. So the upgrades should reflect that and really boost the player. So now you just get to choose between 4 options and you have to only make one click to get back into the game. 
I kept the idea of normal and special upgrades, but the special upgrades now just show up at specific levels. And even the normal upgrades give significant bonuses now, while the special upgrades can fundamentally change the game. And this is what it looks like today. Looking forward now, there is still a lot to do. Most importantly, I want to implement permanent upgrades you can unlock between runs. This is probably the last big system that is still missing. But then I also want more content, more visual effects, more sound effects, a main menu and options would be nice, so there's still lots to do. But I hope I can keep the schedule of releasing this year. So if you're interested in this game, please consider wishlisting it on Steam. I will probably upload some more videos about the game and its development here in the future. Though I have to see if and when I have the time to do so. Until then, thank you for watching and see you next time.